Welcome back to another podcast at Everyday Man of God Ministries. I appreciate you tuning in tonight, or today, or wherever you may be listening to in the world. I want to talk about lust tonight. So, it's a powerful topic. It's in our society, whether you're Christian, non-Christian, doesn't matter. It's in our lives everywhere. But see, the problem is we think of lust in only one way. Well, basically a couple ways. As in Matthew 5, 27, or sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 through 28, spoken by Jesus. So if you turn to that chapter in your King James Bible, we'll go ahead and read. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. That's a powerful statement. But that's all we think about. We just think about lust after a woman or a man or whatever it may be. That physical lust. But that's not it. Truth be told, lust does not contain itself to just that verse. Tonight I'm actually want to, I'm going to explore nearly two dozen verses that talk about lust. Believe me, there are more than that, but for the sake of time, I try to condense it down. So I want to move along as quickly as I can, even though it's not a subject that should be taken lightly or quickly. But again, I know that for, for some who are driving, I know when I listen to a podcast, if I'm on a commute, it's a half hour, and I, uh, I, I want to listen to a whole podcast, but sometimes it's hour-long ones, hour and a half, and so forth and so on. So, let's go ahead and go turn to Mark. Mark chapter 4, verse 19. In your KJV, obviously, if you have one. If you don't have one, I strongly suggest you get one. Because you will be amazed at what the new ones leave out. If you've ever read them. This is the NIV. They leave in things, add things, change things. So, uh, And sometimes a verse doesn't seem as powerful in a different version than in the version that you're reading at that point in time. All right, so Mark chapter 4, verse 19. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it become unfruitful. Now, in that verse, it talks about the word of God, the, the word, the message you're trying to get out. But again, it talks about the world and lust. Because we're so concerned about what the world wants or cares about, and we end up thinking about what we want. What we think we should have. What we desire. See, that's lust in another form. It's not just after some girl or woman or whatever. It doesn't contain itself to that. Let's go to, uh, and again, I'm going to be jumping to scriptures here. So let's go to Luke Chapter 21, verse 34. Luke 21, verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. See, you can't even see the end times coming. You can't even see the message in front of you because of your own lust. What you want. Lust can be powerful. It can be dangerous. It can kill you. Wait a minute. Well, come on. Lust can't kill me. Maybe you're in a situation. Maybe you know someone in a situation that cheated. And the guy found out about it, and that guy has a gun. Okay, now you're just making this extreme situation. Am I? I'm not. It's happened. I've seen it. 
I've seen it and I've read it. When I say I've seen it, I didn't see it in person. I've seen it on the news in different places. And you read the stories. They're out there. Look them up. Those people's lust for each other got one or both killed. It's not a joke. It's real. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. See, it already says uncleanness and lust are in the same sentence, the same verse. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now this refers to abominations or sodomites or however you want to look at it, the same thing. Let's go to verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wow. Lust is amazingly bad. I don't think I don't even think I hear lust in even a secular world as a good thing. Well, it's not lust. I mean, I, I want that. Yeah, sure, I'd like to have that. I mean, I'm not lusting after it. Yeah, sure you are. You're talking about it at that moment. The fact that you have to justify the thought process means right there that you're lusting after it. Let's turn to Romans. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Your body is sin. You have sin. You're full of sin. We have sin. We're, it's a, we're, we're, we have a sinful nature. Oh, well, then there's nothing we can do about it. Absolutely there is. You don't have to Give in to the flesh. The devil wants you to. I'm wondering how many people in the world, without being a smart guy, can actually tell you any time in their lives that when they gave themselves a lust, something positive happened. I've never heard that story. I've never had that story. That's for darn sure. So don't get yourself fooled up and twist and go, oh, what's a big deal? It's a huge deal. Because there are people who lose their lives over it. You wouldn't lose your life over uh, lust if it was a good thing. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I was going, hey, yeah, I had a great day. I lusted after this woman that was married. Or I lusted after this woman and started getting to know her. And, uh, yeah, it ended up awesome. It ended up great. I, I, you know. And maybe you as a guy walk away going, yeah, that was great, that was awesome. And the woman's going, I can't believe I did that. Why did I give in to such temptation and lust? I was so stupid. I don't know why I did that. Now people are going to think differently of me if anybody finds out. Lust is not a good thing. Now, there are many verses in the Bible that talk about it. And if you I, I, I'm always baffled at people who cannot see that. It just amazes me. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. So 1 Peter, I'm trying to turn there as fast as I, even I can. That's 2 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. I'm going to repeat it until I get to it myself. Verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. That war against the soul. Lust is a war. Are you properly, properly equipped? Lust is a spiritual warfare. It's spiritual and it's fleshly. How do you conquer it? Every time, I'll tell you what, if you're full, full of lust, grab a Bible as quickly as you can. Read anything. 
because eventually you can beat it. The more times you don't fall prey to it, the more chances you have of beating it. Some people just full of loss. They've had a history of loss. Some people just kind of what's on the surface. But it only takes that one time. Only one time. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. I, I just don't understand how one cannot look at lust and think to themselves, uh, yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's not all good. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Of wrath. That's something we're going to talk about in some upcoming studies. Wrath. So lust now re leads to wrath. You still think lust is a good idea? You think it works out? Dude, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm going to keep going through this. I think one has to read these over and over again until they see or realize that. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter four, verses three and four. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought this will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and a Abominable idolatries. Boy, lust is some pretty good company, isn't it? Excess of wine. Yeah, that, that actually contributes to lust, let me tell you. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. See, the world, your so-called friends, think you're strange. And try, with the help of the devils, to pry you from the light into the dark. If you're listening tonight and you're struggling with that, you're not the only one. Some will say, no one struggles with lust like that. And others will say, yeah. You're just strange. It's not a big deal, dude. Stop making such a big deal out of it. Again, like I said earlier, I, I'm not sure I've ever met. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I've never met anybody who went like, yeah, lust worked out great for me. No big deals. Yeah, I'm going to have to call that person a liar. Sorry. It is what it is. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's jump back to Ephesians. I know. Well, I'm jumping all over the place. I probably should have just, like, you know, had it ready to go and just wrote it down, a separate piece of paper. But you know what? Why? Let's just turn it in the Bible together. Chapter 4, verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful, Plus, let's go to verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. All of these can be conquered. You do, you do not have to stay in lust. You can leave lust at any time. Pray upon it. People can call you strange. We talked about that earlier. The world. Your so-called friends. Let's look at Ephesians 4.21. Let's go back a verse there. If so, that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The truth is in Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Ask him. Pray. 
Help me, Jesus, out of this. I give this to you. And you'll get help. You'll absolutely get help. Let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. So this I'm going to directly speak towards my former brother-in-law. I guess he's always a brother-in-law, depends on how you look at it, but he took his life. This man was full of lust. Full of it. Full of wanting to be richer, more money, more Rolexes. Brainwashed by the world and his so-called friends, the society, the culture, that he needed to be better than he was. But I tell you right now, you want to be better than the world? Be a godly man. You won't actually look down on other people, but you know what you're going to do if you're married and you have children? You're going to care more about your family, your wife, your children, more than the world, and above all, God. And not to say that you won't have some struggles. And that's another thing I love when they tell you, oh, you'll never have struggles and it's a beautiful life. Well, that also is a lie. So if any pastor, preacher, priest, reverend, rabbi, anything out there you want to call. They tell you that, you know, your best life now and the prosperity, they're liars. They're filthy, filthy liars from the devil. It's just that simple. Let's go to 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. Again, they're going to lust, not only in the secular world, but in the Christian, so-called Christian world, and the Jews, and so forth and so on. They're going to lust after what they want to hear. What satisfies them. More often than not, when you follow through on the things that satisfy yourself, you bring destruction upon yourself and those around you. When you leave this earth and you take your life, you don't take just your life. You don't just destroy you. You leave a trail behind you. You leave an aftermath. So at no point in time is suicide worth it, whether you're a Christian, a non-Christian, whatever point along the way you are in your life you can definitely get help get rid of your pride and we will do, talk about that in another study but we get rid of your pride there are organizations there are places there are helplines there are hotlines there are uh, church buildings there are people there are born again Christians who will be more then help, happy to help you. See, there's a blurred line between the world and false Christianity. It's a dangerous place. Let's go to Titus chapter 3, verses 2 through 3. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. What a beautiful thing. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, which means many, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Do you see how lust does not even, it's not even by itself. Look at all the negatives around it. You're never going to see lust and love and helpfulness and meekness. Nope, 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 no. Nope. Deception, deceiving, malice, hate. You have lust. Get rid of it. And when I say get rid of it, I know you're not going to get rid of it in 10 seconds. It's not what I mean. You need to work on this. It's going to 
destroy you and many around you and it's not always just you it destroys there are people you leave behind second peter chapter 2 verse 18 for when they seek i'm sorry i apologize for when they speak great swelling words of vanity they allure through the lusts of the flesh through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. You know, I'm not against every single building that exists in this world, but I'm against the world and the world of Babel buildings. And there's a difference. There are good, good, beautiful people who have a building on the side of the road somewhere and, and do good works. But then you have these Babel buildings, and you know what I'm talking about if you ever listen to my videos. Listen to my videos, yeah. Listen to my podcast or watch my videos of what I'm talking about when it comes to that. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, Walking after their own lusts. So they will mock you. If you do try to change your life to God and for God, they will mock you. God, really? You need God? You need a crutch? I've heard that before. I don't know if anyone's ever heard that terminology. I heard that years ago. Um, I don't know who said it. I think I actually heard it from Jesse Ventura, uh, a governor out of Minnesota that it's not a talk show, and it says people use religion as a crutch. Maybe. I don't know, but because I don't use religion, so I guess I don't have to worry about that. If there is fruit from your lives from this Bible, then I'm not sure how you can think it's bad. I think people who are against it are those who are convicted and full of hate and ignorance. It's just that simple. Galatians. We want to turn to Galatians 5.16. We're going to be closing here in a couple of minutes now. We're coming to the end. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. We got, we're going to finish on two scriptures here. Galatians 5.16. This I say then, before I, before I finish this up with here, understand that there is literally only one way. And it's not a wide open gate, I can tell you that right now. It is narrow. But straight is the way. You can get to where you need to go. You can destroy lust. You can absolutely conquer lust. Lust is not unconquerable. Absolutely is conquerable. But the problem is, and I will agree, that there are many who fail to help, who aren't sure of the right words, when they can just go to the Bible and find them. Galatians chapter 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit, and you will not succumb to flesh. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. I keep saying it's that simple, and I really believe it is. But you don't have to live with lust because it does destroy. People have taken their lives over lust and many other sins. If you're in that place right now, there are no special prayers. There are no perfect words. In your heart and in your own words, you need to call upon the Lord. And I promise you, if it's not this channel or my video, there are men out there on, 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 on the Rumble channels, there, there are people out there 
that will love you. And I know what you're saying, Steve, I've been to some of the local churches and they're terrible. I agree, there are some terrible churches out there. Church buildings, I should say. Absolutely. But don't give up hope. I was saved in 1989 and lost for 30 years. No discipleship. Took a long time to get there. Fought like crazy. Went through so much troubles. Troubles? Well, I guess we'll stick with troubles. A lot of things. But I'm there now. It's a beautiful place to be. Didn't conquer it overnight. But I've conquered. I appreciate you tuning in this evening, whether it be on Rumble, YouTube, Spotify, Breaker, wherever you're listening from. Thank you, and I hope this helps someone. God bless, and good night.